We're now joined by Oregon State coach Scott Ruick and the student athletes Reagan Beers and Talia von Olhoffen. And we will start with opening comments from the coach. Um, thank you. I thought uh, South Carolina, they're, they're a great team. They played great today. Um, really did a nice job on the boards. Hurt us in transition. Adapted well when we went zone. Um, eventually got comfortable, hit some big shots. Um, defended us well. And, um, you know, they're a very good team. So congrats to Dawn and, and, uh, and to her team and, and uh, you know, their fans and everybody. Um, you know, this means that our season ends. And, and so, um, I was just telling the team in there, you know, I've gotten to talk a lot about great teams for a lot of years. And, and most, more importantly, great people, a lot of years. And this team is, it rivals any team I've ever been a part of. Um, what they did this year is not common. It's not normal. Um, we're not supposed to be here, but we are. And the people in the room, get it, um, not surprised by it. And you all got to see it today. Uh, a fearless, gritty, tough display of competitive fire and passion and togetherness that is as inspiring as anything, as anything. What's more inspiring than what you all just watched? Um, and those of you who have been paying attention, which is not most of you, you know, all year long, um, you would know that from day one. If you were with us in Italy, you would have seen what you saw today. Passion, unbelievable energy, togetherness, and a competitive fire that's just not normal. And so down 12 going into the fourth quarter. So, you know, that's all I had to say. I, we're down 12 to the number one team uh, starting the fourth quarter. Let's go. Can we do it? You know, and, and so just uh, fearless, courageous, together, everything that's right is this team. In our sport where it seems like controversy is the flavor all the time for some reason, and we all have to have something to whine about, this team just keeps it simple and does everything right. And y'all are probably bored with it. Shame on you, is what I'd say. Um, everybody needs to get to know this team, everybody needs to watch this team, and everybody needs to be like this team. The world would be better if everyone focused on this instead of a lot of the other things. And so I couldn't be more proud of a group, more happy to be a part of them, and more grateful. Thank you, Coach. We will now take questions for the student athletes. Go ahead. Howard Medall at the next. Uh, Raiden uh, Talia, congratulations to you both on the season that you had. Uh, Raiden, just to talk about what it meant to you to go up against Camilla Cardozo, somebody who, you know, is, if she chooses to go, uh, is going to be likely a lottery pick. Uh, and what did you learn about your own game today, being able to play her even on the boards, defensively, you name it? Yeah, we learned a lot today. Obviously, playing the number one team is a great challenge for everybody. And so South Carolina is a great team. We wish them all the best of luck. Camilla especially is phenomenal player as you said going to the um, if she decides to go to the draft gonna go high in the draft um, and so uh, we learned a lot about ourselves as a team we learned that we can play with anybody um, <laughs> number one in the country number two in the country whoever it is we learned that we can play with them um, Scott mentioned obviously down four I mean excuse me down 12 going to the fourth quarter he challenged us can you do it um, and looking around at, in the eyes of my teammates we all believe that we could um, and obviously we fell short tonight but we learned that we could play with anybody and Camilla's a phenomenal player I wish all the best she's gonna do great things in the WNBA so Talia, maybe you could take the Pat Eaton Rob from the Associated Press. Talia, maybe you could take this first, but but also Reagan. Um, in this era of, of transfer portal, and we know what's happening with with the Pac-12. Can you just talk about the culture of this team, and um, you know what made you guys gel together, and what do you think the future is for this for this program going forward with Scott? Yeah, I think the future is super bright, and um, we don't focus too much on the portal and. Obviously, that's become more of a thing in, in college basketball, but that's not something that we really discuss too much. We're focused on, um, you know, ourselves, our program, our culture, and, and growing that. And um, all year with conference realignment, you know, all the things that could be distractions or things that you could talk about, we've just put our heads down and controlled what we can control. 
and got to work and stayed together and stayed connected and has gotten us really far. I would just second that. I mean, Talia alluded to it at the beginning of this season. Her saying for our team was helmets on. Um, so block out anything on the sides um, that could distract us this season to get us here. And we were we went back to that um, before a lot of different games, just helmets on, ignore the crowd, ignore um, the refs, ignore the other team, um, focus on each other, because that's when we're at our best, when we love each other and we're playing for each other. And so um, that's been our focus all year. And as she said, that's what has gotten us um, this far. Brett Taylor, KZI9 Sports. Tulia, this one's for you. I know that obviously this was not the outcome you guys wanted, but what you guys have been able to do this season has been incredible. How much do you reflect on this moment in your decision to commit to Oregon State, to stay at Oregon State when you could have entered the transfer portal, to believe in Coach Ruick, to believe in your team, and to believe in yourself this season? Yeah, I think just after the adversity that we faced our first two years, um, it's just a matter of looking in the mirror and, um, you know, for me, just what can I do to make things better here? And I think the grass is green where you water it. Um, and so that's, that's just always been my focus. And um, so I, I saw it as a challenge to rebuild this program and, um, and the culture. And, you know, I, I came here to go to Elite Eights. So obviously, Final Four is a goal, but... Um, to win games like this and, and go this far and this deep in the tournament. And so, um, you know, I just stayed on that path and I continued to believe in the vision um, that Coach Ruick had and um, in the culture of this program. So, um, yeah, I think that's just it. Just that belief that's what got this team where we are. And that's why we were able to go this far, being picked 10th, it's just the belief that we had in each other all year. Um, you know, and I've had that since I stepped on campus. And can I just <laughs> want to say something about T, because Talia this season has a phenomenal job of leading this team. I mean, from last year to this year, drastic change. And obviously, beginning of this year, pick 10th in the conference. And to do what we did and with Talia just leading this team this whole season and staying, as you said, with it when she could have transferred and believing what Scott has built here is incredible. And so we would not be here without Talia. I mean, she has led us um, mentally. And just as I said, she has so many cool um, illusions that I obviously point out one of them. And so just keeping our mindsets and our heads clear, Talia has just been harping on that all year for us. And um, that leadership on our team is a reason that we were able to make it this far. So just want to say that. <laughs> uh, Andrea Adelson with ESPN. Reagan, this one's for you. How frustrated were you when they called that third foul on you? Because from our vantage point, didn't look like maybe it was a foul? And then did that affect the way that you had to play in the second half, knowing that you had three fouls? Yeah, um, obviously playing with three fouls is not easy. Um, it's, it's something that I've had to do a lot of, and that's on me. But um, just weathering the storms, I guess. You know, South Carolina is going to um, go on runs, and um, they're going to get calls. We're going to get calls, vice versa. And so just being able to weather that. Um, uh, I've learned a lot recently in college basketball that it may not, I might not think it's found the moment, um, but maybe it is afterwards. But it's not like they can change that. Um, and so what they call is what they call. You got to move on to the next play. Um, so whether it was a foul or not, we had to get our minds right um, on defense. And so there wasn't really a lot about that. Was my next step was just all right. It was a foul. Let's get this box out. Um, then let's try to not foul again um, when I go back in. So. Uh, Billy Witz with the New York Times. Um, Reagan and Talia, uh, um, you know, just all these things about the season that you've had and the, and the, the culture that you've built, and you, everybody uh, on this team is uh, an under, or able, you know, has, an, has more eligibility here. And yet, with the situation that the school is in, with changing conferences next year, what sense do you have of how many, how many people will be back next year? Um, I guess we don't really have a sense. I mean, our, our season just ended, so we haven't obviously talked about that um, at all. And we don't know where each other are individually for that. So um, we can't really answer that one. So I think just like I said, we've been controlling what we can control yeah. all season. There's no reason to um, look at next year. I think all year people have been saying this team's young, this team's no seniors. Um, but. You know, we're still in this year and we've been so present and it's got, it's why we were able to go to the Elite Eight this year. It wasn't, um, 
you know, let's see how far we can go and then, you know, next year go all the way. It was, we're in this year. And so I'm sure with conference realignment and all this other stuff going on, all the distractions that we have been shutting out, I'm sure there will be conversations because, you know, the future is uncertain for the university. Um, but like I said, this team is so mature and has done a great job, you know, keeping the main thing the main thing. And it got us to the Elite Eight um, and playing right there with the number one overall seed. And so, um, yeah, that's that's where we're at. Right here, then last one here. Um, Eden Lossie, Yahoo Sports, Reagan, if you could take this one. Kind of going off that a little bit, um, you guys were a really young team, and if everyone is to come back, like, you know, this year no one expected it, but next year people will. Um, what about this squad, and particularly, you know, Talia, who set you, is your leader, mm -hmm. makes you feel like you guys will be ready for those expectations and that pressure? I feel like this season is going to help us be ready for next year. Obviously, we're going to reflect a lot back um, on this last season and just see the confidence that we had in each other. That just drove us um, to make it this far um, because a lot of people didn't think we were going to be here. Um, so, But we had belief within each other and belief within our team. That's what drove us here. And so we're going to be reflect reflecting a lot um, as that drives us into next season and just um, pushes the culture and continue to add to that culture that Scott um, has created and that Talia has fostered within us this year. Last one, thank you. Talia, this one's for you again. Um, I want you to kind of talk about a little bit of your relationship with Donovan Hunter because this year as a freshman, what she has done for you guys and the contribution she's put in has been something truly special. And it seems like when I've watched you throughout the season, you've been constantly giving her advice. And obviously I can't watch every practice, but I'm wondering what those interactions have been and what it's been like for you watching her grow, taking every game, every moment, and learning from it and obviously in anticipation for her and how she grows into next season as well. Yeah, I think there's definitely a balance. Um, you know, I've been in her place of, you know, being a freshman that has to play a big role, and um, especially preseason, beginning of Pac-12, there's mistakes that you just have to make um, and that you have to learn from. And, um, you know, kind of being like a coach on the floor, there's, there's so much I could say and so much that I see, but um, she does a great job, you know, figuring things out on her own. And um, a lot of the time she makes a mistake, you know, she knows and um, she knows how to fix it. And so it's kind of just getting that out of her system. And um, she's so mature and so calm and so steady. And that's why she's able to be such a great point guard, um, you know, as a freshman. And so there's definitely times where, you know, I've had to get on her. I've had things to tell her. But um, it's, it's few and far between, especially this late in the season. Um, you know, she's, she's our rock. She, she runs the show for us. And um, yeah, I don't know, I think there's moments where I need to lead and um, I need to kind of be a coach to her. Um, but for the most part, you know, I, the coaches take care of that and she, she's very smart and so she sees things too. And so just kind of letting her figure it out this season, um, it's been incredible to watch and um, special to be a part of and um, to see her leadership grow as well. Um, I think the thing I've probably said to her the most this year is to, you know, you have to call plays, you have to talk, you have to communicate. So getting on her about that has probably been the, the biggest thing. Um, it's just, you know, leading her um, to lead us. Um, and so she's done a great job of that. And to see how much more vocal she's become over the season has been incredible. And I can only imagine um, how much more she's going to grow in the next few years. Thank you to the student athletes for your time this week. We appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you, Go Beavs. Go Beavs. <laughs> We'll now take questions for Coach. Start here. Hi, Pat Eaton, Rob with the Associated Press. Uh, Coach, I know there's no units in women's basketball to put a fiscal number on it, but can you kind of quantify the value of what this run means to your program, to the university, uh, to the future? Hmm. Well, it's my university, so I care. Uh, it's my mom's university. She's sitting back there. Um, and so in this, I mean, one thing I'll say, it's hard hearing your school talked about the way it's been talked about, you know, and, and uh, in a way devalued, um, you know, and clearly I don't see it that way. Um, coming back to my school and, and uh, you know, creating a program that has the ability to fill a stadium or an arena, a coliseum, um, 
to turn a community and a region on its ear, kind of, um, has been a dream of mine. And we've done that, you know, and we've done it at the highest level. And we've gotten to this point um, a couple times now. And so uh, what the value is, I don't know, but I know the timing of it's really great. You know, um, we've been drunk through the mud and just like today, listening to you guys talk, um, you know, I, I don't see what y'all see. Um, we're closer to Portland than Oregon is, are we not? Um, and so media, all, media va I, I don't know. All I know is uh, Beaver Nation is awesome. And Oregon State is an incredible university. And it's an unbelievable home away from home for our students. And we can compete with anyone from there. Uh, and so I don't know what the value is, but I know that happened. And it's probably perfect timing for Beaver Nation. And it's been a joy of mine to put smiles on people's face, especially this year. Howard Magdal at the next. Scott, congratulations on the season. Thank you. Um, you know, just to jump off what I was talking to Reagan about a little bit, and you spoke about yesterday that part of what you've done here is to make pros. And so when you see somebody do this as a sophomore, you know, I go back to Ruth Hamblin, who, and you look at what she put up um, numbers-wise, which is incredible, and you sent her on to the WNBA. Reagan is ahead of where she was as a senior, as a sophomore, mm -hmm. in every number you can come up with. Mm -hmm. How good can she be, and what's kind of the, the distance left to travel from here to, you know, when you finally send her on her way? Sky's the limit. And, you know, I, I would equate Ray a little bit more to Marie Gulich, um, you know, than, than, than uh, Ruth. And it's ironic, Ruth and, and Ray have very similar personalities. So if you got to know them, you'd see a lot of similarities in their qualities as a human. Um, but the versatility that Ray has, I mean, she's very guardish. I mean, you saw her run the point tonight, you know, a little bit, and she can do that. Um, you know, I, I think, well, I know, she can shoot the three. You know, we haven't used that a lot. It hasn't been a go-to thing for her yet, but it's evolving, and it's something that is there. Uh, she hit a couple last year, and I don't know if she made one this year or not, but she's capable. And, you know, at that level, you've got to be able to uh, be consistent from the perimeter. And that's why I, I would say more like Marie. You know, Marie is, um, I mean, dominating the world right now, you know, as a center and, and can slide to the power forward spot, which Ray can. She's, she's so versatile. Her passing ability allows her to be a perimeter player. And so as that perimeter shot develops to go along with an unguardable inside game, sky's the limit. Uh, you, you put the, all the character with it, you know, and so it's just this trajectory that just, it's not going to quit until she decides to hang it up. Scott, Nancy Armour with USA Today Sports. Um, you guys were within two, I believe it was about midway through the third quarter, and then they went on that big run. Um, it's what they've been doing to people all year. How difficult is it when they just start rolling downhill like that? Difficult. Um, you know, I, I think during that stretch, um, you know, I, I, I mentioned it yesterday as we were getting ready for this game. The difference in this team is their ability to consistently knock down threes. That's, that's what makes them what they are, in my opinion. Um, South Carolina will always be a great rebounding team. They'll always have an inside presence. They always have. They'll always have people that can really defend and disrupt. Um, they haven't always had consistent perimeter scoring, and this team does. And that's what ended up hurting us. You know, we gave up some rebounds during that stretch. I think, you know, the foul situation probably was an impact because we were out there, you know, walking on eggshells, playing in a china closet, you know, trying to avoid that fourth or fifth foul. And, and so because of that, you know, you, you play a little tentative, and it seemed like our rebounding effort was a little tentative during that stretch, you know, and that's what makes them who they are. I mean, they can turn you over and get a bucket, get over boards, miss, get another one, miss, get another one, and finish, and then knock the three down, you know. And so uh, we just were unable to answer offensively during that stretch, and that was probably the biggest thing, and give them credit for a, a great defensive effort all day. Here and over there. Hey, Coach, you, you talked about the, the team being like this, having this potential all year. So, so going back to, you know, probably your first, like, big game of the year, you, uh, tied with Villanova sort of late in the yeah. game. Did you know back then by how they responded that this was 
No, not, not just possible, but likely. That was day one. That, that was the day that it, was, that it was evident that this group had, in my opinion, just all the characteristics of what it took. Um, you know, to be able to close out a team that's, excuse me, used to winning, like Villanova, especially at that time, was, I mean, they're coming off a 30-win season. They were game two, I think, for both of us. Uh, you know, I, I know when you come off that, you're confident you're winning. A close game, you win. And, and so we had to overcome that belief in them that day and our execution on both ends of the floor. A year ago, we couldn't get the stop we needed. This year, we got the stops we needed. We scored. And that just maintained throughout the year. And so that was day one for us, the first big win. And that day felt like a, it felt like a conference game that day. Hey, Scott. Doug Feinberg, the AP. You made that run at the end to cut it to four with about 350 or so left and then just couldn't hit one. Yeah. Shots you wanted, just they weren't falling, or just their defense turned up? What was the difference in that last stretch there? I thought we got lots of great shots. Um, looking back on it, we had one empty possession that I didn't like during that stretch. Um, you know, but we came out of a timeout, I believe, and missed a, we, we had a pretty good look that we missed. And I thought we got about every shot we wanted, you know, um, down the stretch of this game. They just didn't fall. Uh, and then give them credit for not giving us two. You know, I mean, they did a great job on the defensive boards, which put a lot of pressure on our shooters. Um, you know, and then it got to seven, and, and that, then we were pressing. I thought we took um, maybe one rush shot during that stretch. You know, but I really liked our execution, um, and I thought we got the looks. You know, but in this game today, we had to be near flawless, and we just weren't, weren't able. We just weren't quite flawless enough. <laughs> Hey, Coach, Brett Taylor, KZI9 Sports. The final scoreboard I don't think is going to reflect how great you guys played, obviously, South Carolina today, but the one stat line that caught my eye was you guys holding them to 33% shooting from the field, which I think was the worst. I tried looking that up. What do you think this performance by you guys, especially defensively, showed the nation when the talk has been just give, give us one game to show what we can bring to you? Hmm. Ah, just who we are. You know who we are. I mean, you got a team that's supposed to beat us. Uh, what was the? I mean, they're supposed to beat us by 15 or 16. Somebody, somebody told me that, and everybody knows it was a, it was a closer game than that. It felt, and we had to overcome a lot of adversity today. Um, and and I don't know. I I just all the stuff I said at the beginning. I guess I I just think you know that that this team. Um, we're a tough out. We were a tough out all year long. Uh, we're tested, we're battle tested, and we're fearless. You know, and I think we, I think it seemed fearless to me. It really did. I thought we looked fearless today, and I thought we gave ourselves a chance to win, um, which I had hoped. That's all we, anybody can hope. And we were there with three minutes to go. You know, give them credit for making the plays down the stretch. Hey, Coach, Vince Gasparini with the BigSpur.com. Could you speak on, from a coach's perspective, the way Dawn Staley has built up South Carolina's program? Yeah. Um, she's been there, and we talked before the game, 16 years, you know, and I've been here 14. Um, and I know, I don't remember exactly how, what it was like when she took over, but I'm pretty confident it wasn't like it is now. Um, Dawn, obviously, uh, she's a legend. I mean, she's a Hall of Famer. Um, if she's not in the Hall of Fame for coaching, she obviously will be. Um, she's an Olympian. She's got every, she checks every box, you know. Um, she's a great competitor. Um, and so when, you know, you got a coach like that, you're going to get talent, um, and she's going to rally th their fans, you know, and they're supported extremely well. And, um, I think they're 104 and three over the last three years now, something like that. I read, I read that, um, and you know that's not an accident. You know they're they're very well coached and they're very disciplined, and you know they've got two starting lineups on their team, and and so uh, she's she's doing a great job, obviously. You know, but I think, um, yeah, I just don't I just don't see a lot of weakness. Um, you know, really in anything they do um, from any angle. Here and then last one right behind. Go ahead. Uh, Andrea Adelson with ESPN. Scott, you mentioned how you felt the foul trouble may have affected perhaps the way that you played. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the officiating in this game, particularly Reagan's third foul? I, I was blocked out on it, um, so I couldn't see it with my own eyes. Um, I, I've been told um, it probably wasn't an accurate call. That's what I've heard. I'm not here to 
get in trouble or anything. But clearly, um, clearly there were a couple calls right there that were ma that massively influenced this game, and you just hope they are accurate. Last one, go ahead. Hey, Chapel Fowler of the State, kind of picking back in off that, specifically the Reagan Camilla matchup. Um, yeah. How, how tough is it to officiate a battle down low like that, and how do you think um, that went? Well, you know, I, I would have liked Ray to be able to play a little more free in this game. You know, and three fouls in the first half, nobody wants to see that. You know, and, and the way the game was going, I, was, I felt like kind of, my hand was kind of forced to have her out there in that second quarter to finish up, to stay close. And, and so, um, yeah, I mean, you know, when your back's to the wall like that, you kind of – you got to roll the dice a little bit, you know. And so uh, I, I loved the battle. I mean, that's what everybody wants to see, right? Nobody wants to see, you know, foul trouble. The, you just want to see them go at each other. And as long as it's logical, let it happen. You know, just let them play. And, and not, I don't want fouls, but I want it to be, you know, what everybody would want it to be, common sense. Um, I don't know if that left the building or not, you know, today. But that's what I wanted to see. When it was like that, it was fantastic. You know, those are two great players um, that are so skilled and so talented and, and um, have systems that are built to feature them both, you know. And so this time of the year, you pray to see the best go at it, and uh, that's great sport, you know. So when it was like that, it was great sport. Coach, thank you very much for your time this week. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.